Thank you so much for being part of us this morning. It's 3rd of August 2020. I trust you've been well. And if you just tuned in, this is why in the morning, why 254 TV is the uh, station you're watching. Now, we want to talk about the family support you know COVID-19 has come up with many lessons actually before uh, we <coughs> started coming on air um, we were talking about a certain group of people will be addressing them and how they are fearing on during this pandemic and of course the ramifications of COVID-19 has affected everyone we are working on um, economic um, say tightrope because we do not have money and the least, little we have we have to share it with our family members and them that are working actually work on Amzigo Kubwa. So how are we supporting our families? We want to look especially to the young moms. These are the people who um, we could say they have been affected so much with COVID-19. I'm speaking to Pascal Injeri. Um, she's a founder and executive director of Carmind Foundation. Good morning. Good morning, Hilary. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Now, you know, uh, let me actually start by asking, how has COVID-19 um, impacted on you? Um, COVID-19, I would say, has impacted majority of us, directly or indirectly. Mm -hmm. And I would say, personally, I am the founder, like you mentioned, of Calman Foundation. Mm -hmm. So there is work that we were doing before COVID-19 happened. And of course, most of our work entails going to the community, mm -hmm. to work together with the community, to help the community, the moms in the communities. Now COVID is here and we can no longer go on the ground because again, remember, we have to keep social distancing. Mm -hmm. And so we are not able to go and reach out to those moms. It becomes very difficult to start telling a mom in a slum area, for instance, mm -hmm. to go and hold, um, because we are holding a social, um, sorry, a social media mm -hmm. uh, engagement to come on board so that we are able to help them from there. It's not possible. Mm -hmm. So that would mean us trying to figure out other ways to reach out to those moms to be able to still support them. But it has not been easy because nobody, like we didn't have a warning that this would happen. Mm -hmm. So we were really not prepared for this. So everything has happened. All the plans we had for 2020, we have to go back to the drawing board and think, so what are we going to use? What, are me what measures are we going to put in place to ensure that we are still able to work mm -hmm. in this new um, way of doing things? Right. Yeah, so yes, it has affected us in that way. Mm -hmm. And of course, it has also affected me personally because there is definitely fear. You know, <laughs> let's talk about the fear that everybody is, you know. That's right. uh, uh, it's affecting everybody. The fact that the numbers are increasing, the fact that you've seen people affected, you've seen people passing on from this virus. It has become more real to us. And mm -hmm. of course, there is that fear. And we are in Nairobi, the hotspot of the virus. So sure. everyone, uh, you meet everybody, you're just worried. There is also the asymptomatic people. So anybody could be a candidate for that virus because there is no any symptoms. It's not everybody who carries a symptom with them. Mm -hmm. So you just afraid there's just fear everywhere true yeah. well that has been um the case of majority if not all mm -hmm. but now um, now that we interact with the young moms mm -hmm. when i say by the way because covid 19 may affect what wengi the young moms on say maji both single and even in, with the family mm -hmm. yeah the young moms have been affected in a big big way and i'll tell you some of them, let's start with the job losses that have been happening. Mm -hmm. So you, have, you are employed. Now companies are, of course, uh, downsizing. Um, maybe you are working as a day bag somewhere in a household. Mm -hmm. uh, we have seen those young moms all over the estates sitting down, trying to hope and hoping that they will get someone who will come and pick them and give them a job for the day mm -hmm. so they can get something for their children back at home. But unfortunately, because of the virus, you're afraid of picking such a mom, you know, so they will stay there, but chances are slim that they will get a job. So there's the job loss. This is the fact that they're not able to earn a living anymore from the jobs that they used to do. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, there's also the lack of support. We have the moms who are now new moms and they became moms during mm -hmm. the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So we have been told you need to keep your distances, the, the social distance aspect. So the family, the way we used to have neighbors come in and support the new mom, we used to have our family and friends come in and support the new moms. Now they're not able to get that True. Uh, because they also have to be safe. So that means that this mom, the, whatever challenges she faces during this season as a new mom she has to be it alone mm -hmm. so it becomes very difficult to be able to you know cope um, it is not easy it is not easy to cope with a new motherhood journey anymore mm -hmm. 
So, and then again, we also talk about the, even the pregnant moms. So right now, one of the biggest challenges is, you know, we have the curfew. From 9 p.m., we're not supposed to be outside. Okay. Yeah. Going into labor does not give you a warning when it will come. So if it comes True. past 9 p.m., mm. this mom doesn't have a car. This mom doesn't have a neighbor who has a car. Mm. They cannot call a cab. They cannot call a motorcycle or, or a motorbike, I mean. So what is this mom supposed to do? So we have seen areas where p moms have been giving birth at home alone or mm. maybe calling in midwives who are maybe close by. Mm -hmm. So that is, again, endangering their lives mm -hmm. so there has been a lot of issues that are affecting the young women and um, some of them don't even know how exactly you can come on board but I'm sure when we come together and and we think of ways to to support these new moms then it's possible mm -hmm. but they have a lot of uh, issues that are affecting them at the moment mm. yes. uh, you, you've mentioned of curfew and it has reminded me of another uh, person who was working, he lives in the slums. Mm -hmm. And actually, I had not seen this about the moms. Mm -hmm. uh, it has just reminded him of a simple thing, mm -hmm. the call of nature. You know, uh, a place like Madari or Kibra, mm -hmm. we do not have the the, uh, the luxury of having the toilet in your house. Mm -hmm. You have to move. So it has gotten them to a point whereby mm -hmm. they are not taking care of the environment any longer. Mm -hmm. Because now it's at night yeah. and it's a call of nature. What mm -hmm. do you do? Mm -hmm the possible thing so they are not taking care of the environment mm -hmm. because they can't go out otherwise what doctor na police na watafungwa now trying to explain why you are out again it's embarrassing I so you end up to do what you can mm -hmm. but now um, i want us to shift gear to something now very heavy mm -hmm. one would ask mm -hmm. what as we're speaking about our family support mm -hmm. what is a family mm -hmm. what uh encompasses a family mm -hmm. what do i expect from my family mm -hmm. yeah family i would say um we're used to the setup of a nuclear family but i would say family is anybody who is around you because mm -hmm. remember i might have people who are a nuclear family but they're not close to me at that point of need mm -hmm. so the people who will come on board as your family are the people who are closest to you at that point where you now need support mm -hmm. so that th that is what i would define family as Mm -hmm. And um, in different ways, of course, right now, because of the, 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 the pandemic, there is different situations that call for that kind of support. Mm -hmm. And I would even say one of, the, of them is the people who have been contracted the disease, for mm -hmm. instance. One of the biggest fear of contracting this disease is what we have seen on media. We have seen how people are picked by people who have PPEs and the ambulance, what we are talking about. Mm -hmm. You know, it's already traumatizing that everybody is afraid of you. You go get uh, isolated, and then the only people you get to see mm -hmm. is not your family. It is not the people closest to you. Mm -hmm. It is people who have dressed from head to toe, covered. You cannot even tell who this person is. I have seen in some places they have started putting a picture here, so they hang a picture of them you so that you're able yeah. to know who is serving you or who is in the room with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's, 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 it's definitely going to affect you mentally. For any person, it's definitely going to affect you mentally. So mm -hmm. even if you're able to reach out with your phone, talk to family and friends, mm -hmm. there's something that being together physically does to you mm -hmm. that being isolated like that will not do to you. And then the fear of what will happen, will I die from this, this disease or will I survive? Mm -hmm. There's that constant fear. Because the moment today you are not coughing, tomorrow you wake up and you're coughing, you're thinking your symptoms are getting worse for sure. And you you're don't know about... You're waiting for temperatures to rise Exactly. <laughs> you're already thinking of the worst. Mm -hmm. You know? So, yeah. So there's that constant fear. So, and then again, um, now in terms of family, there is those ones who have been told they can be um, isolated in their homes mm -hmm. so then of course now the people who are going to be their caregivers at that point is their families and they're the ones who are actually even getting trained on how to take care of these people mm -hmm. so again the family is also feeling there's the fear of also contracting the disease because as much as it's my family member who has contracted the disease me being uh, being there serving them doing one two three things means that i'm also exposed to the virus mm -hmm. in one way or the other it's possible for me to get so it becomes um again a, a very confused um place to be mm -hmm. yeah you want to help your p person you want to help this person but again, you're also afraid of this virus. You're not sure how best to do it. Make sure that you're 100% sure you'll not contract the virus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so family, of course, will come in handy at that point, but it also affects them mentally as well. And that's why it's very important that even as we take care of the people who are contracting the virus, that we also make sure that the family and the caregivers are also taken care of because mm -hmm. it also affects them indirectly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, um, we may have moved uh, with time mm -hmm. where now... Um, our women are no longer housewives, but COVID-19 has come uh, badly. It has hit some family where we are now seeing change of guard. 
the man was used to provide or even the woman was at a point to provide to the family but now one of them has been affected we could say someone has been injured they are now limping how do we move forward how do we accept the situation someone who was used to be the breadwinner they are no longer not by their making they have lost their jobs or uh, maybe something they were doing it has stopped mm -hmm. like see the project some some people who are abroad they came back they cannot continue mm -hmm. so how now do we live on with this it is a difficult place to be and hillary the numbers of people who are have been affected like that are so many mm -hmm. um we have seen hotels um, releasing their people. We have seen hospitals giving people unpaid leaves, mm -hmm. compulsory. We have seen so many people affected. These are the people we are talking about. True. The people who are now in their homes and they now do not have jobs anymore. And um, they did not probably have a business. Or if they did have a business, maybe the business is also not doing very well because mm -hmm. everybody has been affected, including the small businesses, not talking about even the startups. Mm -hmm. um, the startups, I'm just wondering, most of them might not even manage to mm -hmm. get uh, through this pandemic. So... So many people have been affected and it's true that it could be the husband, it could be the woman, it could be that it was even a single parent and now they do not have a job and they were the breadwinners in that family, they have children who are looking up to them. Mm -hmm. So it is a difficult time to be, um, a difficult place to be. But what I would say is that this is how the situation is. But you don't have to let it consume you, you don't have to allow it to be... It is a reality, but you don't have to say that you're going to be stuck there because now you do not have a job. Remember that the bills are still there. The children still need to feed. So you have to get yourself up and think of what is your other option. Mm -hmm. you, are you going to start thinking of the smallest of businesses, including, you know, like, you know, sometimes you think big. I'm thinking, should I start a business? And I'm thinking it's a big business. Who is going to buy for me? Sometimes, Hillary, it's the smallest things that you think are not going to help that actually come in handy. I have seen so many people now mm -hmm. who are using their cars yeah. to put uh, fruits there and go and sell in at random places in town, in estates, and they're making money. Those are probably some of the people who are affected. So they just sat down and decided, this is the reality. I now do not have a job, but the bills are still there. I still need to feed my family so what do I do mm -hmm. I will go buy fruits I'll put them in my car I'll move them place them in a certain place and go and sell and get my uh, something small and I'll, my children will not sleep hungry so I think it's about being positive amid everything that is happening mm -hmm. that we do not allow ourselves to be desperate and allow ourselves to completely be consumed by what is happening right now mm -hmm. and that is why we're having so many, uh, the, the, the cases of mental illnesses are increasing because people are depressed, they're getting depressed. Yeah, people right. are getting an uh, anxiety disorders. Mm -hmm. People are attempting suicide or even taking their own lives eventually mm -hmm. because they are frustrated. They can't see how they will get out of this. They can't see a better ending to this. Mm -hmm. So what I would say is that this is the time that that positivity is called for the most. Like just get yourself together and tell yourself that this is a reality. It has happened. Mm -hmm. There's nothing for me to, you know, I'll cry. I can cry all day. I can choose to cry all week, but that will not pay the bills at the end of the week. So let me get myself together and think of option two. Mm -hmm. So what is my next option? What do I need to do to get myself? And it doesn't have to be big something or job. You can start with very smallest of things, including selling chapels outside there and getting sure. something to mm -hmm. take back home in there at the end of the day mm -hmm. yeah all right now you have mentioned of something this uh the depression of course mm -hmm. it's because of uh, stress you mm -hmm. used to do this now you can't do and maybe the, your partner is not understanding mm -hmm. we have had cases of uh, gender-based violence in the recent days it has increased yes uh, because people are home you you're speaking to me i i hear on, on <laughs> how do I tell someone is about to snap and how, how do I react? How now do I solve these problems? Mm -hmm. How do I prevent myself going to the next stage? No, gender-based violence, what happens is that um, it does not just, you just don't wake up one day and someone kills you. They don't just wake up and kill you day one. Mm -hmm. There is what, you know, it is day one, you probably get a slap. Day two, you know, something else happened and then the person uh, apologizes and then you continue living with them. Then day three, something else happened. By the time they're getting to killing you, this is how it starts. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, this time, everybody's under pressure. So it could be that the husband is also under pressure because he doesn't now have a job. And then so something small will trigger him to get over the roof mm -hmm. because now he already has internal things as he's, that he's dealing with, you know. So what I would say is that some of these cases are not new cases. It could also be that this woman already was suffering from gender uh, uh, violence, from violence, even before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. It has only gotten worse. 
other, other, for others, it could be that this has started now. Mm -hmm. Maybe the pressures, we can give whatever excuse we want to give, but there's no e e um, excuse that we can actually give for uh, getting violent, mm -hmm. you know, because it's someone's life you're putting at risk. It's someone that we might just end up killing. So really, it does not, nothing can justify that kind of an action. Mm -hmm. But what I would say is that the moment the violence starts, Hillary, the moment you see he has slapped me today, he has kicked me today, Mm -hmm. That is the point where you make the decision to move because mm -hmm. it is coming. You're it not is coming. The red flags. I, you have already seen the red flags. You know the unfortunate bit is that most of the people whom those are the women who end up killed, mm -hmm. they did not. You know they saw the red flags and may probably even talk to, you, to, to about them to their friends or whoever it was. Mm -hmm. And they told them, "No, my husband nowadays beats me. Yesterday he came drunk. I think it was because he was drunk. No, he today morning at least he was sober. He talked to me and he apologized and we are okay. Mm -hmm. But he beat you yesterday." The other day he will come, he'll probably use something else. Mm -hmm. The other time, he will take a knife and stab you and kill you. You don't have to wait until it gets there. If you are feeling like you do not know where to get help, because sometimes it also comes from that the families are not supportive. Mm -hmm. You go back to your parents and they tell you, no, please, that is not how marriages work. You can't come back home. You need to be there with your husband. Go mm -hmm. and sort out your issues and then you're taken back to that marriage. You know, and nothing has changed. So the husband will continue beating you because you've been taken back. Mm -hmm. So there is what we call the recovery centers. Um, Nairobi Women's Hospital has that, the gender-based violence recovery centers. You can go and report your case there. You can start your recovery there. They will guide you whether you need to report what the processes uh, that you need to take mm -hmm. to, to be safe. Because again, remember, some of these people are very violent. You can go and report and then you're coming back. You've reported me. You can't just come back. Mm -hmm. And then again, other women, they're wondering, so once I report and I leave the house, where am I going to? I have children. Uh, some of them are not privileged to have families where they can run to or they can go back to. Mm -hmm. So starting from the gender-based violence recovery centers would be a good starting point for them to advise you on what you need to do mm -hmm. um, and where you can seek help and where you can seek safety just to make sure that you're safe before you're able to, to pick yourself again and be, you know, be able to survive after, after, after what happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, true. Mm -hmm. uh, we've also had uh, cases, mm -hmm. they have been reported of mothers who have killed their children because of this. Now, mm -hmm. here is, is a single mom, mm -hmm. uh, COVID-19 has come. Okay, could be the worst pandemic because it's globally. Mm -hmm. But now this mom has a problem. Mm -hmm. She doesn't know how to feed the babies mm -hmm. or maybe do something for them. The babies don't un understand this COVID-19. Mom mm -hmm. ha doesn't have money. Mm -hmm. But now the mom has gone over roof. Things are not okay. How, how, can, how can one prevent themselves from getting to the worst point? It is possible to prevent yourself from getting to that point. And I just want to even give an example of the Naivasha woman. There's mm -hmm. a, a mother who killed her four children. It was in the news a few weeks ago. Yeah. She took her four children, one after the other, and killed them. She was definitely not okay. You would not sit like that and start saying, this mom, she's so heartless. She's so mm -hmm. everything that we'd want to name her. She just did not wake up one day and decide she wants to butcher all her children. Definitely she was struggling. Some prob probably someone noticed she was struggling but thought that she was asking for, she was just seeking attention or something. Uh, there's a point she talked about, I think, the husband. So maybe they had issues and mm -hmm. you know nobody really cared about the issues or to try and help her mm -hmm. get better. So there is all those kind of, and of course, like you say, during the pandemic, it can only get worse. So this is a woman who was already probably struggling with putting food on the table. Then now, mm -hmm. pandemic has hit. Let me give an example of those moms who were daybags are now in Kileleshwa estates, Lovington estates, seated outside the gates hoping that someone will come and give them a job. Mm -hmm. So they come there, sit down day one, there is no job. Day two, no job. Day three, no job. A whole week, two weeks, there's no job. The kids are still there at home waiting for you, mom, to come back home with food. Mm -hmm. How do you start explaining to them that you don't have any food to give to them? They are hungry, of course, you can see they are hungry. Mm -hmm. You do not probably have relatives who you can say, let me call so and so to help me. You don't have people who can come in and support you. Mm -hmm. It can be very frustrating, very, very frustrating. And so it is at that point where you, these moms need support more than ever, especially from, the, 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 I would say, like the community. Sometimes we talk about the civil society organizations, we talk about the government, we talk about everybody else to come in and think of how they can support such moms mm -hmm. uh, or such people. But at the end of the day, um, I think even us as neighbors, you know, there's probably one, two, three people that you know that might be affected like that. If you're able, would you want to help this person and how can you help this person? Just think of how you can help this, this mom. Whether it's by giving them maybe a job one day a week, 
mm -hmm. somewhere, you know, whether it's connecting them with places where they can get uh, that kind of um, employment, or is this just skills, give them skills which they can use and get them something, maybe they're used to this kind of job mm -hmm. because they don't have these kind of skills. Give them, empower them with the skills and help them to, you know, be able to fend for themselves I with, with the skills that you empower them with. Mm -hmm. And then for the moms, of course, it has started. This is how things are going. You don't have to, like I said before, you don't have to beat yourself too hard and say that this is the end of the world and now I'm not getting this job, I'm not getting money. Think of, there's always something else that you can do, Hillary. There's mm -hmm. always, if you do not choose, if you're not too choosy, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. we don't have to think about I have to get this and what job. People will say. And what people will say. What will my family think? What will people think? Mm -hmm. They were used to seeing me wearing suits and going to the office. No. So now I am here, <laughs> you know, yeah, trying mm -hmm. to make ends meet, selling chapatis or selling whatever it is I'm selling. Mm -hmm. So what will they think? My dear, if you think about what people will think, they will not come and feed you and your family. Yeah, exactly. they will not come and feed you and your family. So at the end of the day, you have to think about what is best for you and what is best for your family. That is what counts at the end of the day. That is what is most important. And that is where sometimes we lose it. Because sometimes when people even end up killing themselves, it's because they are wondering, like you said, what will people think? If I tell people that now I do not have a job, what will people think? You're not even mm -hmm. telling people. You're afraid of telling people that you don't have a job. Yet these people, you may just Speaking tell them and then they problem. help you. You know, it, speaking out is, and I think it's just a, a, a pride, some, some sort of pride that we have in us, mm -hmm. that you just feel like I am at such a level, I do not want people to know that now I'm no longer there, I'm here. Mm. You know, now you want to maintain the standard. You want to maintain the standard. Now, uh, speaking of uh, the parents and how to care for their children, mm. now, do you think it's a point, it has come to a point where now mm. parents should sit down with their children, uh, maybe at age seven one would understand actually we have a generation that knows hey mzazi ni ku kuchungo watoto as in mm. you should be responsible and you hear, you hear someone mm. uh, telling their parents you should be a responsible mom you know like uh, okay umefika yo umuri ya kunijibu waji mm. so they know my mom should provide food but mm -hmm. now is it a point where are we are we at a point where now we should sit down our children and tell them by the way it can get to a point where i cannot have money and we have to survive. Should we do that? We should do that. You know, it depends with how old your baby is. Because of course, if they're very young, they'll not understand what you're telling them. Mm -hmm. But if you're worried that they are noticing the difference, then it's probable that they're already at that age, age where they understand what mm -hmm. is happening. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we actually put so much pressure and make our children get stressed because we are not willing to involve them in those conversations. Like even during this pandemic, see children now are in the house because you don't want to allow them to go out there. True. Why are we not telling them what this corona is and what the pandemic is and why they cannot go outside? Mm -hmm. If we do tell them, then it means that they will understand why things have had to change. Mm -hmm. In the same case, I now do not have a job because of the pandemic. Sit down with your children mm -hmm. or whoever is old enough to understand. It is in, a, in an age appropriate way mm -hmm you know, like words and, and, and ways that they can understand. Mm, why you can't have BB why every day. Why we cannot, day. exactly, exactly. <laughs> because probably they are used to that kind of life where mm. every Sunday we normally go to wherever, every Saturday we normally go to wherever. But right now, even for people who are still have their jobs, there mm -hmm. are things that have had to be changed. Right. Because you're still worried how long will this last? Mm. So you have to also do a lot of saving as it is. Mm -hmm. So you still have to talk to your children and tell them, Things have had to change because of one, two, three things. So daddy now or mommy now does not have a job mm -hmm. because corona came and things have changed because one, two, three things have happened. Make them understand in a way that a child can understand why it has to be different. So that then you also, uh, you're also helping yourself mm -hmm. from the demands that will come. Because if they were always used to, when they ask for a car, maybe you get them, you know, the toy cars or whatever kind of toys, you, mm -hmm. you know, you're always very fast to provide for them. Then today, no, they don't understand why when they, uh, they ask for it, it is not coming as, as, as fast as it used to. So you're also helping yourself from them having so high expectations, uh, th those kind of high expectations from you. They now know that I need to be careful what I'm asking for because mom doesn't have so much money anymore. Mm -hmm. But you're also helping them understand that this is just for some time. God willing, things will get better and we'll be fine again. So let us survive this season. Let us do what we can to survive this season. It is very, very important for us to have those conversations, by the way. And on that note, mm -hmm. let me also talk about the, 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 the involvement of parents and their kids at this, at the, at the, during this pandemic. Mm -hmm. Remember now the schools are closed. So children are 
largely in those households. And we have been seeing so many things that are happening as a result of this. We have seen the high teenage pregnancies that True. has become such a big issue now. Mm -hmm. Very, very young ladies, very, very young girls are now pregnant. Of course, now it means that it's so much pressure on them because now you're a young mom, there's the societal pressure, the other, your, your peers are there wondering, you know, of mm -hmm. course, putting pressure on you negatively. They now do not know whether they go back to school in January or not, you know, so there's so much pressure on them. But even for you as a parent, now you have a teen who is now a mom and you don't even know how you're going to even start taking care of your own daughter and their daughter. You know, this mm -hmm. is not what you hoped for and this is not what you are hoping things will look like. True. And then we have also been seeing very high, um, many of the crimes, the crime rate has gone up. And of course, because of the, 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 the fact that people have lost their jobs. But some of these crimes are actually getting committed by children who are still in high school. We saw the case of a boy in Kisi who was almost getting burnt because he had stolen somewhere. And when he was asked, he actually said, no, me, I'm actually a schoolboy. So now they have so much time, they mm -hmm. don't know what to do with this time anymore. So what is happening? They go outside there, they get themselves with their own company, and then these things start happening. You realize that your kid has not become a thief, you didn't even know. You thought really your kid has gone where, then later that's when you're hearing your kid has been burnt or whatever has happened to your kid because they were thieves. Mm -hmm. So I think it is time for us as parents to be very, very actively involved in the lives of our children. Mm -hmm. Because now they have a lot of time with us. And as much as it's true that we are also busy, because if we, even if you're working from home, you're also trying very much to work hard so that you're able to provide for them. Mm -hmm. But even as we work hard to provide for them, let us also be very careful and intentional about knowing where, what is happening to our children, where are they, who are they with, as in be involved in their lives. Of course, you're not going to completely say now you're going to hold them, you know, but also be very actively involved so that then we can reduce the number of these mm -hmm. things that are happening. True. Yeah. Now, uh, speaking of uh, parenting and what has happened uh, the recent past, we've heard of the teenage pregnancies and mm -hmm. now the case you're men mentioning of a, of a crime. Mm -hmm. Now, should we go back to the older age of uh, parenting where the child be belonged to the community? If I meet you in the wrong, I punish you. To achieve story, I'm to to aflani, I'm to to angu. Usi guzem to to angu. It would it would be a good way of doing it. I'm just wondering whether it's practical though, <laughs> because nowadays we don't even know each other to start with Hillary. You know, we live in a, in, in Kitambo, it used to be that we were in communities where people knew each other. When mm -hmm. you even go to a certain bus station and say, I want to go to Suju, whoever's place, they will take you there. Yeah. They knew each other, we knew each other. So even when I'm punishing or I'm, I'm, I'm punishing this child, I already know I'm punishing Totuanani. And I'll go and tell the parents, mm -hmm. by the way, I met with so and so, and this is what they were doing, and I punished them for that. So mm -hmm. you already know each other, it's a community. Nowadays, you don't even know your next door neighbor. You don't know each other. You just normally say, hi, hi. If something happens in their house, you won't even know. Because mm -hmm. you don't talk. You mm -hmm. don't know each other. We lost our values. We Should we go back there? Values. We need to. But hey, it is not easy. The society needs to change. It needs to we've change. We've lost uh, something uh, very important in the society. Because I remember when mm -hmm. I was growing up, mm -hmm. someone would correct me. Yes. And nikifika mm home, naongezewa. -hmm. And then I'll know. Truly, hayo mm -hmm. makosa. But today, mm -hmm. I, you could even see small boys fighting or doing something mm -hmm. um, uh, fishy. And unapita too. Mm -hmm. I think we need to go back there. It was the best place to be. How oh. we can go back there? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, I think we need to go back there. Now, mm -hmm. um, things have changed. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to address this um, group mm -hmm. of young partners at ha in the house. Mm -hmm. um, the, how do I, do I support my partner? Because mm -hmm. things have changed. Even mm -hmm. the guards have changed. Mm -hmm. How do I uh, support them? You know, we all have our feelings. We mm -hmm. all have our emotions. And mm -hmm. how I react to issues is different from how uh, the other person will. Mm -hmm. But now, understanding there's a, there's, a, there's a pandemic that is affecting everyone, mm -hmm. whether you're strong or you're weak, mm -hmm. how do we support each other? Knowing, Asida uh, Zangu Zinakwanga up to this point. Mm -hmm. But for the sake of this coronavirus, mm -hmm. I'm going to tone it down, Kidogo. Mm -hmm. How do we get to that point? Very, very important. Let me tell you, Hilary, right now, there are so many things that have to change. Because, like we said now, there's these partners are spending so much time together, <coughs> even in the households. Right. Because they're probably working from the house, or they have lost their jobs, so they're in the house. Mm -hmm. So, you are together. So, the more you are together, the higher the chances of conflict. Huh? True. So, you're going to see one thing that you never used to notice before, and then it pisses you. And you're just <laughs> like, do I really? 
you want to. <laughs> you just mm. want to deal with it as it is uh, mm. immediately. Yeah. But this is the time, like you said, for us to also realize that people have different things that are affecting them in their heads. As in, like, you may just see someone there, but there's so many things that are affecting Th that they're thinking about mm. and there's so much negative emotions that they have that any small thing that they probably would manage to handle very well initially mm -hmm. are now not able to handle. So like you said, it is really, really important for us to just be very careful about how we deal with our partners. Mm -hmm. You have to go down. This is not the time to decide we are going to argue about that toilet seat, why it's up and why it's supposed to be down and all that. Mm -hmm. Those small issues that we can forget about, please forget about. Mm -hmm. You really don't have to add those kind of stresses mm -hmm. to already person who is already having their own struggles internally mm -hmm. of how to survive you know yeah so for this that you know in marriage and in partnership there is a lot of compromise compromise that has to go in place you have to do a lot of compromising you would definitely there's one two three things that you're going to notice and you would rather they be in a different way mm -hmm. but because you want peace in that house if you really really think and, and prioritize your partnership or your marriage that much mm -hmm. then there are things that would be like it's okay let me compromise that mm -hmm. for the sake of peace for the sake of this marriage for the sake of of course it depends with what you're also compromising but yeah like we said if it's in terms of those things that you know we are just conflict we are going to it will definitely we know if i say mm -hmm. this he's definitely going to be mad so right now he can only get even wa worse <laughs> do we really want to go that route because mm -hmm. we already know what will happen so True. yeah just compromise mm -hmm. uh, for the sake of peace in that house uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm laughing because uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> i recently heard of a story that mm -hmm. our partners argue for as uh, let me quote and quote silly things yes. as they could be yes. uh, that will not add your value to the uh, marriages <laughs> like atimbona <laughs> ita ni red <laughs> and they will argue wa kasidike sijuna ni onanga aji and things will not be the same again True. but anyway uh, <laughs> those are partnership mm -hmm. now let's um address these people who have been seeing to mesa olika mm -hmm. i'm speaking about um I don't like calling them slay queens, mm -hmm. <laughs> but they are people who had their lives. Uh, uh, um, it is believed now, uh, ladies on Onangambali, mm -hmm. just that our corona corona. So it so happened. Uh, Rulikana um uh, sponsor kakutafti nyumba kilele show maybe Lavington or whatever uh, leafy suburb you living in, and now the sponsor has moved to the main chick. Umebaki, number how na rent, and maybe you were pregnant, or maybe you had a three months, one year baby, but the mze is no longer there. How do we help this girl? Now, coming back to the Morio Morio, the boy boy, when you are kitu, you know, those are the people who will help you because at the end of the day, mm -hmm. but now, how now, how, how now do I accept my situation and now come back and say, like, yeah, I know I made a mistake? Recovery. <laughs> <laughs> Hillary. <laughs> that is an interest an mm -hmm. interesting one. But let me tell you, I would start by saying mm -hmm. in everything that we do, the choices that we make, mm -hmm. we always know that there are consequences True. for our actions. Mm -hmm. If you choose a certain way of living, you are ready for the consequences. Mm -hmm. Whenever they come, whatever even if they take ten years, we take five years, they take whatever number, you, you know that this one, this could also be an ending. This could also happen. Mm -hmm. Um, so, like you said, I remember seeing this conversation when Corona started, when they were having these memes on social media yeah. platforms, mm -hmm. saying that now, <laughs> finally, men have been taken back home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where, they belong. Eh? Where they belong. they <laughs> belong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, now, <laughs> they, 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 like you're calling them the slay queens or the, the, the pangwa candles, how we sometimes refer to them, mm -hmm. they have now been left alone. So, they are now to figure out their lives. Mm -hmm. Some of them probably even had children with these people. So I know there are probably some who probably are still getting support, even if not physically being present, but maybe they are still getting supported in whichever way. Mm -hmm. Others, of course, they are not getting that support completely. So now it's you and your children, if you had children, to figure out how you're going to continue surviving. Mm -hmm. So, of course, they have been impacted. But again, like I said, I think it's also consequences that they, 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 they should have foreseen. Because even if pandemic did not happen, mm -hmm. people change. It yeah, could true. be that today I am telling you that you're going tomorrow, you'll be my second wife. And then tomorrow we wake up and I'm telling you I don't want anything to do with you anymore. Mm -hmm. And I don't mm -hmm. even want to do anything with the, that child, you know. So when you're going to that man who you knew had a family, this is one of the things that could come up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now the pandemic has come and 
so many of it has become like um, it has like the numbers have increased in terms of the number of mpangwa candles who are now being left mm -hmm. yeah so i don't know how to say we can help them i think that is just a matter of helping yourself if you are mpangwa candle mm -hmm. um, figuring out how you're going to continue living and earning now a living alone because some of i know some of them also do not i'm not saying everybody uh, but I know some of them also are wholly dependent on that person. So they were maintaining everything about you, mm -hmm. your house, your everything. And now you have to go back and... Kupandandu uh, And kupandandu Ama shofa na kukujia. Wow, it is a difficult one. Being yeah, humbled. but now <laughs> life humbles you. Now mm -hmm. pandemic has humbled you, so you've come back to reality. And now True. you have to live where you truly uh, mm -hmm. you, you were you know mm -hmm. like yeah but those, those are just consequences so you figure out how you're going to continue living after that whether mm -hmm. you're going to continue with your child or you want maintenance for your child from the father yeah so now those are decisions that you sit down and start making knowing that this is what happened mm -hmm. and truly truly he was not yours he belonged to someone else you knew that from the word go maybe so it's called consequences of the actions and the choices that we make now how do you know what's the good kazi no. <laughs> if you have something you can do other than finding another person Hillary, these women will come for you <laughs> no i'm trying to help them I, i'm sure we're trying to help you uh, open your minds uh it's not just about that man or this man yeah. it's about what is in your mind what can yes. you do what because do? even going to them you used your mind yeah true you can still use your mind to mm -hmm. do something else yeah Exactly. Mm. Now, final words as you speak to these uh, ladies, mm -hmm. Aki ladies. Now, I'm going to leave you. Yeah, so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, uh, for your final words and um, as we finish on mm. this particular topic. Yeah. Okay. So, final words, I think I want to speak very much to the moms because that's the area where I, I mostly, those are the people I work with mostly. And um, one I want to talk to, of course, the new moms, you know, mm. the, 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 the moms who um are currently um having ch they currently have new ch uh, children and they were used to the c support where it is physical support so you are used to people coming and helping you or it was an expectation and that is what we always used to tell the moms please get people to come and support you please ask for help tell people when you need that help tell people you know when you need that kind of help now unfortunately it is not possible for them to get that so i would request you if you're a new mom kindly kindly um reach out and still get that support it's just that it will be in different form in that in the sense that it will be on call so if you feel like you're getting overwhelmed if you feel like you're getting overwhelmed emotionally things are not working as you'd want them to kindly reach out to your friends reach out to your family reach out to any person who you think can can come in handy and support you um and and, and just for advice because talking is just they might not be there to help you with that child at night because of course physical distance but again they could help you with one two three tips that might come in handy for you to be able to cope with the season so please please um as much as possible seek that help um, and then um, just know that you are not alone. And, and, and if you can are able to still get into on, online support groups, um, places that you can get that kind of support, even if you're not getting the physical support, I think it will come in handy for you during this season. Yeah, so that's what I would want to say. And let's be very supportive of each other. And just remember that the people who are very prone right now to getting um, mentally ill during this season is mostly the new moms, of course, and of course also the people who have had um, cases of mental illnesses before. This time, because of the anxiety, because of the things that are happening, they become mm -hmm. even more prone to getting, the, the, their symptoms becoming more uh, severe. Mm -hmm. So it is very important for us to also have those kind of people in mind for us to give them as much support as they need. And of course the people who are also directly impacted mm -hmm. by the virus. Let us give them as much support as we can. Um, yeah, any way you can support, please do support them. They really, really need it at this point. Yeah, actually, I'm seeing something that uh, maybe we, we, we overlooked. There are so mm. many issues that we could talk about when mm. it comes to family support and mm. the stresses the people are going through. Mm. Uh, we have a comment here. Mm. It, it's in line with the teenage pregnancies. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Faye Jones mm. from Twitter. He says, uh, have a look at Baringo girls. Mm -hmm. They are trading sex for sanitary towels. They say that at least when schools were opened, they got assistance. Yes, school reopening on January. What action can we make? Gender-based violence is here. Depression is here. Next step, what will it be? 
have had these cases of uh, gas trading uh, for sanitary towels. Actually, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. What's the next step? The next step is supporting these kind of people, mm -hmm. because Hillary, you know, these children, the reason why they're now trading their bodies with with um, sanitary towels is because they were used to getting them from the schools. Mm -hmm. They used to receive these ones every other time from the school they they, they were schooling in, but now. They do not have access to them because the parents who would be able to buy, who ca who should buy for them, mm -hmm. do not have even food to feed them. So sanitary uh, towels sound like, a, like like it's really not a, a primary need at the moment. Mm -hmm. But for them, of course, they need them. And there's this man out here who has promised them that they can give them mm -hmm. if only they are able to give them their bodies. I'll buy for you sanitary pads, and next month again, if you need it again, I'll buy for you. But you have to give me one, two, three things. Mm -hmm. So I have seen many civil society organizations coming together and supporting them. I have also seen politicians come in and, 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 and just donating sanitary towels to these girls. Okay. I believe that this if, if we can do it in a bigger way, because again, remember, this is something that comes every month. Mm -hmm. So if it's just one organization, I mean, how much can they support? And how many girls do you even have in Kenya? Not many. You know, Very yeah. True. And it's until January. So there has to be like strategies. So if civil society organizations and the government can sit down together and decide in this area, these ones who are going to take charge of these girls and make sure that they have sanitary towels. In this area, do one, two, three. You know, like everybody, we have, because we have very many civil society organizations, especially in the area of menstrual hygiene. I have seen so many organizations mm -hmm. that deal with that. So if they were to come together and decide that they want to support this initiative, it mm -hmm. is very possible for them to make that impact. Right. And again, if you're talking about until, um, the, the dire need is until uh, January, then it's possible for them to do it for those months and support those girls wholly until January when they're able to resume school and probably continue hoping uh, uh, continue getting the sanitary towels from their schools. All right. Uh, true to your words, Nisha Kanyanga waya mtu mahali ni meambua today I'm very hurting <laughs> uh, because of uh, these particular ladies. But pole ni sana. Uh, COVID-19 is the punisher, the teacher. <laughs> to many. I have, I have been told to deliver that message. Punisher, teacher, learn something from it, mm -hmm. run with it. Thank you so much for coming. Can Pascaline. I also say something? Yes. One last sorry time, I know, but yeah, one last yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. Like you said, I think Corona, uh, the pandemic has also taught us so many things. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things, I know there's so many negative things that we've talked about, but there's also the positive aspect that we have now come to appreciate our families more. One, right. mm -hmm. because we spend so much time with our children, we now understand them and we have come to have that close connection and bond with them. It has also taught us that we can actually work from our homes and still deliver. Mm -hmm. We have always seen parents who are always like, I can't be in by, with my family because I need to travel. So every other time they're traveling, they're here, they're here, mm -hmm. they're here. Mm -hmm. Now they have been forced to work from their homes and uh, apparently it's possible. it is possible. So we have been taught so many things, there's so many things that we have learned that are positive mm -hmm. and I hope that we can carry these ones on even after the pandemic is over. Yeah, actually maybe we may have a, a sitting, we see how positive COVID-19 has been to yes. us. Yes. Thank you so much back home for keeping us company. It was all in good faith. Thank you so much for being part of us. Pascal Injeri has been my guest. She's the founder of Calmind Foundation. My name is Dereva Hilary. Have yourself a very good day. We'll be seeing you later in the day or maybe in the evening with the news. Stay tuned. Enjoy the rest of our programming. Good morning.